I hope you've seen the Steven Universe movie because today I'm breaking down the very unique villain, Spinel. And I'm gonna tell you why I think Spinel is one of the deepest characters in the series. Hey there, family members, you have McGann, and welcome to The Fangirl, where we overanalyze movies for your enjoyment. I've done so many videos on Steven Universe, I just absolutely adore this series. So I just have to talk about the wacky Looney Tunes slash Disney-inspired villain, Spinel. As soon as Spinel starts her song, it's pretty easy to guess that she used to be part of Pink Diamond's entourage, but she got left behind for some reason. I thought, well, maybe it was an accident, or maybe Maybe she's just mad that Pearl knew the truth about Pink Diamond and she didn't. But the truth of Spinel's situation was just so heartbreaking. Spinel was designed to keep a young Pink Diamond happy, and as Pink Diamond grew up and matured, Spinel didn't, so her diamond outgrew her. But instead of taking Spinel to her court and, you know, leaving her with other life forms, Pink Diamond instead decided to tell Spinel that they were playing a game and that Spinel needed to stand right there in their secret garden. Then Pink left and never came back. Now, most of us might try a trick like this on a younger relative, and we know that eventually that young lane is going to realize they're being tricked and stop waiting for you. But Pink knows full well what the authority of a diamond means. So if Pink tells one of her subjects to stay and wait, they're gonna stay and wait. And I mean, we've always seen Pink Diamond do stupid things or flat out selfish things, but she's always had some kind of logic to make it seem less horrible. However, we've never seen Pink play mean girls like this before. And that was really nothing short of an evil action on Pink's part. This is all particularly tragic because Spinel doesn't realize that Pink Diamond's over her. In her mind, they're still best buddies. And oh, it really hurts to have people outgrow you, especially when you don't even know what you're doing wrong. And truly, a lot of times you're not doing anything wrong. You're just two people in two different places. But it's not always the case that both parties realize that. Now, most of us have been in a situation where some of our friends have outgrown us or vice versa. And let me say, I'm in my 30s now, but I still remember when my friends Sarah and Megan, that's not me, again. That's a totally separate human being, I swear swearsies. They just cornered me on the playground one day in the fourth grade and said they weren't going to be friends with me anymore because I was living in a kitty world for still liking cartoons. In the fourth frickin' grade. Granted, I did grow up in a county that had one of the highest teen birth rates in the country, so if you weren't making out with guys and letting them grab your non-boobs at age 10, you were basically a hopeless loser like me. But even though that happened 20 years ago, that still hurts me. Yes, I've made other friends over the years, so it's not like I'm pining away hoping that Sarah or Megan will come back into my life, but there's something just epically tragic about being blindsided with the fact that your friends don't actually like you and you had no idea. It can really mess up your head and force you to keep other people at a distance for your own emotional safety. So in that way, I get Spinel on a very personal level. It's like, Oh, I see. We were best friends for years, but then you went and made new friends and just left me in the dirt. I was forgotten. I never mattered. You just decided our friendship was over on a whim one day. Cool. If you really want to have a freak out mental breakdown, watch two people that both stop being your friends suddenly find each other and become best friends themselves. Ultimate heartbreak 5000. Don't complain to me about romantic relationships. That stuff is a heartbreak fatality. And I think for Spinel, it was even harder harder to process that type of rejection because, like Pearl mentioned, Spinel is a perfect cut of gems, so she's literally the best she can be. And yet, she still got discarded so shamelessly. How do you not be inconsolably hurt after that? And in that way, being mentally reset was almost like a blessing for Spinel. Ignorance is bliss, and you don't have that old baggage weighing you down anymore. Except that emotional baggage is still there, just under the surface, in influencing certain things that you do. And that makes Spinel so important as a character because really the whole injector plot thing doesn't matter. The thing released all its goo and the planet didn't die anyways. So the Crooniverse could have fiddled with the script to make Spinel ignorant and happy forever, but they didn't. They had her change back, face her issues, relapse, and then finally come to the realization that there is no winning her fight. Spinel is trying to lash out to ease her own 
pain, but like Stephen told her, he can't change how she feels, only she can do that for herself. Sometimes there's just no amount of closure or vengeance to fix a broken heart. You just have to write out those negative feelings until you're ready to heal, because the only way out is through. Once that notion sunk in, Spinell started breaking down and actually processing her feelings. Why was she trying to hurt Stephen and the Earth? She just wanted to be friends and following her anger wasn't going to achieve that goal. I mean, really, I think Spinell wanted acknowledgement that she had been severely wronged and then welcomed into the interfold, but how do you attack someone and then end up living happily ever after with them? Stephen is very forgiving, but Spinell is still struggling to accept herself, and she just wasn't ready to forgive her actions or look at Stephen every day and have all those painful memories flood back, because even if Stephen accepts her, she's always going to remember that her diamond, the person she was made for, did not. So Spinell had to do what most of us have to do when our friends move on from us, take it in, accept it, and move on to form new relationships. That doesn't always help to ease the sorrow, but that pain can help us appreciate the next friendship a little bit more. Although it is really interesting that the diamonds just kind of came in and took Spinell. Their whole logic behind it was, well, you used to belong to Pink Diamond and you remind us so much of Pink Diamond. It is very telling that Pink, White, and Yellow Diamond look at Spinell and say, oh, you're just like Pink, especially when Spinell is just a big old goof ball doing silly things to make people laugh. And that's also very telling for the environment that Pink was living in, that she was always in this shadow and seen as a little kid. Because seeing Pink Diamond outgrow Spinell and becoming so mean-spirited towards her, it really shows that the rest of the Diamond Authority didn't know Pink at all. They saw her as a little girl and that's all she was ever going to be. And that's part of why I guess she would want to be Rose Quartz and then eventually shatter herself for freedom. Doesn't make it right, but I can at least follow that train of logic. Pink wanted more and I can understand that. Doesn't mean I agree with how she went about it or that she did anything in the right or proper way, but at least I kind of get that. Pink being so mean and cold-hearted to Spinell though is just unforgivably cruel. And also really big side note here, but I'm still kind of confused how that pink serum was set to destroy the earth in 41 hours, but after that entire vial was emptied into the planet, it was no unfixable repercussion. Like, we didn't even see any plants die. It cracked the earth a little bit, and then they somehow cleaned it up, and yada, yada, yada. It's fine now. I have no clue how to wrap my mind around that giant plot hole, so if you have any ideas, please leave them in the comments. I might be overthinking it, but that's literally my job. All right, we are derping today. For those of you who are new to this channel, we kind of have a little song or a little conversation at the end of the video just to kind of decompress and people can hang out a little bit longer if they're not ready to go yet. You don't have to stay, it's just for fun. But because I don't know any of the songs in the Steven Universe movie yet, I am gonna go for my favorite. I was fine with the men who would come into her life now and again. I was fine. Cause I knew that they didn't really matter until you. I was fine when you came and we fought like it was all some silly game over her who she'd choose. After all these years, I never thought I'd lose. It's over, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it over? It's over, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it over? You won, and she chose you, and she loved you, and she's gone. It's over, isn't it? Why can't I move on? War and glory, reinvention, fusion, freedom, her attention out in daylight, my potential, bold, precise, experimental. Who am I now in this world without her? Petty and dull with the nerve to 
to doubt her. What does it matter? It's already done. Now I've got to be there for her son. It's... Okay, yeah, no, this is... I gotta end this. I'm sorry. I could do this whole song forever. I love it so much, but copyright claims are still a real problem on YouTube, so I'm gonna end it there. We're gonna call it educational because it loops back in with the theme of the video about trying to cope with the loss of a friend. Anyways, thank you, my dear family members, for watching, and we'll see you next time. And yet, she still got discarded. Discarded. How do you not be irreconcilably, irreconcilably, how do you not be irreconcilably, how do you not be irreconcilably, <laughs> what the heck was that? How do you not be irreconcilably, how do you not be inconsolably, hor inconsolably, how do you, how do you not be inconsol, how do you not be inconsolably hurt after that? Well, family members, we're almost done, but I want to invite you to hang out with me in some other places. I'm on Twitter and Instagram as my own personal self, and I have a Facebook page too, but I mostly just post photos over there. And sometimes people say, hey, McGann, I want to mail you something. How do I do that? Easy. Just click the About tab on my channel page, and my most current P.O. Box info will be right there. I also run another channel, The Family. It's really a hodgepodge channel where we might post anything. Oh yeah, and I also sell shirts and stickers and stuff with the family and the fangirl logos. If that is your cup of tea, I have a link in every description of every video. Finally, if you want to help out the fangirl channel and make sure I'm putting out video essays for years to come, the best way you can help is by subscribing and watching more of my videos, whether they're new, old, whatever. Maybe even share one or two on social media, help spread the word. People who watch to the end of videos like you helps to tell the site, hey, this is a good video. We should recommend it to other people. So if you made it this far, leave me a comment of something like, hey, I made it to the end. Love ya. See you next time, family members.